I'm Amanda Hewson. And I'm Caleb Herberson, and this is Spoke TV, your source for local weekly news produced by second year journalism broadcast students from Conestoga College. With Remembrance Day coming up, the McRae House in Guelph hosted Thank a Veteran Day. Carla Buela visited with local veterans and viewed memorabilia from the late poet John McRae. Guelph and its community will honor veterans and pay tribute to those who lost their lives and fought for freedom by giving thanks to some local veterans at John McRae's house. 100 years ago, Guelph native John McRae wrote the poem in Flanders Fields, which has been a staple for Remembrance Day ceremonies around the world ever since. Val Harrison, supervisor of visitor experiences with Guelph Museum, says that it is important for the city of Guelph to celebrate veterans. What we want to do today is thank our veterans. Um, this museum represents John McRae. It's the 100th anniversary of the writing of the poem in Flanders Fields, and we want to honor all veterans who have been part of, of what, what's made Canada's history. Veterans are gathered here to share their stories, going back from the days they endured the battle for the freedom of our country. Dorothy Scott was a member of Women's Air Force for four years during World War II and shared her story with visitors well, at McRae House. The battle wasn't a battle as such. I mean, if a, a narrated warning came over, you took, uh, well, you tried to get for shelter, if you were out in the country, you just sort of kept away from being right out in the open and hoped for the best. Over the years, the poppy has stood a symbol to represent Canadians who have fallen in war and military operations. It has been passed from generation to generation. Veterans are our heroes. Their courage and sacrifice will never be forgotten. For Spoke TV, I'm Carla Bola. BlackBerry is trying to make a comeback with their newest phone by attempting to attract a different market. Amid constant financial struggles, BlackBerry hopes to bounce back with the release of their newest phone, the BlackBerry Priv. The phone comes equipped with the sliding keyboard, 18 megapixel camera, and many other features comparable to other Android devices. This is BlackBerry's first attempt at an Android phone and is on the market for $799 unlocked and $299 on a two-year fixed contract. BlackBerry's CEO John Chen has stated that the company needs to sell a total of 5 million devices this year or they may have to step out of the mobile phone business. Seniors face many daily struggles as they age, but one that may not come to mind is finding affordable housing. There are new initiatives popping up in hopes of helping seniors find affordable housing. Spoke TV's Carmen Ponciano gives us a deeper look into this issue. Seniors in the city of Waterloo are finding that when it comes to downsizing, the process is not as easy as it used to be. While home prices have gone up by 77% in the past 20 years, many are spending about a third of their income on housing. Seniors represent 8% of Waterloo's population. However, with only 12% of the 1,800 units that are affordable for them, like in the case of Esther Grillo, downsizing has proven to be a difficult process. She is one of many cases that has had to downsize out of necessity, but the finances is just part of the reason why. I can't be here uh, forever because of the finances, partly. But one of the big reasons, too, is it's a very emotional thing when you're my age and you have to move. And uh, I can't stay here and see my husband everywhere in this house, you know. It's really hard on me. The City of Waterloo released its first senior housing directory earlier this year that lists 17 older adult housing sites, which is a result of the city's effort to maintain their rank as an age-friendly city in the World Health Organization. But John Lewis, a University of Waterloo professor and an active member of the city's age-friendly advisory committee, says that getting the committee and the regional staff to work together is a starting point to finding a solution. So the region of Waterloo deals with things like affordable and social housing. That's their responsibility. So I think what the primary thing we need to do is to get our committee and people who are working at the region, their staff, talking together uh, to talk about and think about solutions to deal with this sort of thing. Um, obviously, we need to talk to the province of Ontario, um, Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, um, in order to raise awareness of this issue. And I'm sure they're aware of it as an issue. It's, uh, it's not unknown. He also says that the region needs to make clear of what affordable housing really is. For Spoke TV, I'm Carmen Ponciano. Cold weather is on its way and keeping warm is everyone's goal. With space heaters and home cooking, it's important that smoke and CO detectors are functioning. Lindsay Griesbach has more on keeping your home safe this winter. 
November 1st to 7th marked Ontario's second annual Carbon Monoxide Awareness Week. Carbon monoxide is a deadly gas also known as the silent killer because of its invisible, tasteless and odorless nature. 80% of carbon monoxide deaths occur in the home, which is why provincial law requires residents to have one working carbon monoxide alarm adjacent to every sleeping area in homes that have a fuel burning appliance, fireplace or attached garage. Waterloo Fire Rescue held an educational booth at Conestoga Mall on November 5th to teach residents about carbon monoxide and how to properly use your detectors. Waterloo Fire Rescue Education Officer John Percy talks about what can cause carbon monoxide poisoning in the home. So the common ones in the winter season is when people have their cars in the garage and they start it up to heat up. The other challenge that we find are faulty fueled appliances. So if our furnace is not working properly, our fireplaces. So what CO is, it's incomplete combustion. So it's when fuels do not burn completely, they produce carbon monoxide. If that gets into the home, that's why it's so important to have a working carbon monoxide alarm law so we don't have poison in the home. Closing doors and windows, exiting the home and calling 911 is the first priority. Local resident Jill Bruyer had a close call with natural gas in her home several years ago. They put on their suits, they came in and uh, measured the gas levels and they were quite high. They told us later that if my daughter had come home, which she usually did if she had a spare, and flipped on a light, it possibly could have ignited and been like a bomb, I guess. To prevent accidents from faulty detectors, annual alarm inspections are recommended. For more information, visit cosafety.ca or waterloo.ca slash fire. For Spoke TV, I'm Lindsay Griesbach. The recent rise of Pelican incidents in the Waterloo region has made the annual gun amnesty program even more important. It was started last year for people to turn in guns to police if they are not in use. Spoke TV's Kyle Royakers has more info on the story. The month of November marks the launch of the Waterloo Regional Police's Firearms and Weapons Amnesty a program with the intention of ridding unwanted or unused weapons from people's homes. Wayne Abbas is a gun enthusiast with a wide collection of long guns, meaning shotguns and rifles. He explains why he keeps so many of them and a reason that someone might have for getting rid of them. The death in the family and uh, the father had them and the mother didn't know what to do with them or the kids didn't or they didn't have kids, nobody to hand them down to, then that would be a reason to get rid of guns. But uh, I personally would never have a reason to get rid of my guns. I keep them sentimental reasons. It is no longer required for a person to register long guns. Having simply the firearm license will do. This has caused some trouble for police officers as they now have no idea how many weapons a person may have in their home. There are many reasons that someone may have an illegal weapon in their home. Their license on a firearm may have expired and they're worried about repercussions. They may not know that it's illegal such as the case of nunchucks, throwing stars, and even brass knuckles. Or, in the case of weapons that are not illegal, they can still cause a lot of damage. Staff Sergeant Eugene Fenton of the Waterloo Regional Police talks about some of the problems that this year has seen with pellet guns. If used improperly, they can create um, a lot of fear or, in some case, injury. There's been some incidents of violence in our community lately um, where people have been hurt uh, as a result of misuse of pellet guns. So we were just highlighting that if you have uh, one of those and you no longer need it or you're not sure that it's being properly used in your household, you want to get rid of it, we'll, we'll gladly take it and make sure it's properly secured. For Spoke TV, I'm Kyle Royakers. If you play an instrument, it may be benefiting you in more ways than you think. According to the Information and Communications Technology Council, learning an instrument boosts literacy and math skills. Jacob Martin has the story of local charities making waves within the community. Playing an instrument helps kids develop literacy and creativity skills. Fortunately for the youth in the Waterloo region, there are programs in place that give them the chance to learn how to play the guitar. 100 Guitars for 100 Kids, started by Blue Rodeo's Bob Egan, has set a goal of 100 guitars to fix up and give back to the kids of the region. Ted, in his creative way, said, you know, we want to build capacity, we want to help the musicians of the future. And I said, hey, why don't we uh, do that by getting guitars into these kids' hands? The first recipient of the program was the local YWCA for their Girls Rock Weekend. Five electric guitars and five basses were fixed and then donated to the organization, who then gave them to the girls that participated. In June of this year is when Cambridge Live Music's co-founder and chairman Ted Ferris teamed up with Bob Egan to form Guitars for Kids in Cambridge. That's essentially the same program, just without the cap on the amount of guitars donated. So far they have received 49 guitars and have serviced and returned 16 of them to the community for kids to enjoy. 
And if you're, if you're willing to drop off or donate some guitars to this program, uh, your guitars can be uh, donated or dropped off to the Queen Street Music School in Cambridge or any branch of the ID Exchange in Cambridge, including the Galt Public Library. After the guitars get fully serviced, they get donated back into the community to places like ID Exchange and the Queen Street Music Hall. They get put into the hands of kids who couldn't otherwise afford one. The very first annual Guitars for Kids fundraiser will be taking place at the Preston Legion in Cambridge on November 29th. For Spoke TV, I'm Jacob Martin. Seeing more facial hair recently? Every year, Prostate Cancer Canada encourages individuals to grow their best mustache and beard in support of men's health. This year, Movember is occurring in 21 countries across the globe. The beginning of November marks the appearances of Mo Bros and Mo Sistas, a term given to individuals participating in No Shave November. Prostate Cancer Canada sees the participants of Movember as walking, talking billboards for men's health. Charity groups such as the Movember Foundation provide fun, encouraging, and informational websites for participants and people looking to donate. It's not too late for KW to freshen up their faces and start growing those handlebars and Duck Dynasty beards. Having leadership qualities are valuable regardless of your age. The CSI Leadership Conference aims to give young people the tools they need to lead. Spoke TV's Michelle Ramos has more on this story. With the recent election of Justin Trudeau at only 43 years young, one can only imagine the extensive leadership skills that brought him to where he is today. Many young Canadians are looking to gain and develop these leadership skills as well through attending events such as the annual leadership conference hosted by Conestoga College. This year's meeting, hosted at Bingham's Conference Centre in Kitchener, is the fourth annual leadership event hosted for students from the city's local college. This fun-filled weekend was held both Saturday and Sunday and cost students $30, which included meals, leadership skill-developing activities, and famous guest speakers, such as international motivational speaker Della Tora McNeil. Jeff Shear, the president of Conestoga Students Incorporated, talks about how these events help young people develop essential leadership skills. Uh, so it was a good way for not only our students to be exposed to leadership on campus, but also a way for them to be able to take that and use it in the future as well. Students expressed why the conference was of importance to them. It makes you more prominent in general, not just on the workplace. It makes you more of a stronger person, stronger personality. People listen to you, um, but for the right reasons, not because they're scared of you. Um, you know, I feel like maybe I have a lack of confidence sometimes. You know, it's, it's a big world out there. You have to have that, uh, that drive. So sometimes having that leadership edge, just anywhere you can get it, especially from great people that have that example going forward, uh, just to give you that little perspective that you can use uh, just to have that leadership going into that confidence, just to get your drive back up there. This nonprofit event is completely funded by Conestoga Students Incorporated. For Spoke TV, I'm Michelle Ramos. Glee and Pitch Perfect portray a cappella in the youth community. But it's not only teens enjoying the sounds of music. Kelly Golden spoke with the Twin City Harmonizers, an older a cappella group excited about youth's participation. A cappella quartets and barbershop groups have recently been making a comeback. The city of Waterloo alone has over five a cappella groups. The unaccompanied minors are an a cappella group at the University of Waterloo, who think that it is important that the younger generations stay in touch with this style of music. Other types of a cappella, such as barber shops, focus more on harmonizing. Terry Holman of the Twin doing. City Harmonizers says that it's refreshing to see younger singers taking an interest in a cappella. The music style hasn't changed. Some of the arrangements are more difficult uh, through the years, getting a little more complicated, but there is a real rebirth as far as the younger generation goes. Uh, Acapella has become so big that there are even national competitions and conventions taking place annually across the globe. Vice President of the Twin City Harmonizers, Fred Eager, has some advice for those who are thinking of joining an acapella, quartet, or barbershop group. No, I just suggest that uh, if you haven't tried it, come out and do it, because I think you'd really enjoy it. Uh, it's something that once you're in it, you get hooked. You don't have to have music experience. Uh, of course, if you had a voice that can't hold a tune, that might be a different issue, but most people have good singing voices, they just don't realize it. Regardless of whether you want to sing competitively or just for fun, you can find either when it comes to a cappella groups. 
For Spoke TV, I'm Kelly Golden. That's all we have for you this week. For Spoke TV from Conestoga College, I'm Caleb Herbison. And I'm Amanda Houston. For more news and information, visit SpokeTV.ca.